Hello everybody, oh, welcome back to my channel. My name is Darylin and today I want to talk to you about some very sad <laughs> And today I want to talk to you about some plants that I have killed. Now I have a little bit of like different kind of criteria when it comes to like counting a plant as having been killed by me at mine own hand. And that is because I don't really think that if you import a plant and it doesn't survive import, that's your fault. <laughs> I mean, yes, of course, there's things you can do to like increase the likelihood, but at the same time, the import process is brutal. Like phytosanitary process is awful on a plant. They're pulled from their substrate, they're treated with chemicals, they're left to dry, and then they're stuffed in moss, shipped across the world, and there's no light in the box. And you know, sometimes it can take weeks for them to reach you or their final destination from where they originated. So I don't usually count that as killing a plant. So if you have had a lot of imports that haven't survived, don't feel bad. Just maybe like do some more research on some better like methods, but that's not your fault. There's some plants you get from import and even if you do a really good job with them, like you're gonna lose some. That's why I always order more than one if I really want a plant. Cause sometimes you know you'll get a good surprise and they'll all make it. And like with my Syngonium Green Splash, I ordered three and they all made it. So now I have a nice big bushy green splash. But yeah, Syngonium Aureas, not the same outcome. Anyway, so we're gonna talk about seven plants that I have killed in the past year that I would say, yeah, there it was my fault. And it's all tragic and I'm extremely sad about it. I guess we'll just get into it. So number seven was, were, cause I'm just like lumping two plants together here. My big golden pothos and my big marble queen pothos. <laughs> now this was really, really sad because I had had those plants for like three years. They were part of the big batch of plants that I got when I moved into this apartment when I was like, okay, I have windows again. I can have plants again. I'm stoked. And I'd had them for a really long time. They were doing well and they were starting to get like really big and bushy and achieve the look I wanted. And I think I might've even included that marble queen pothos on like a favorites list in the past. I don't remember. But essentially what happened with those was that they succumbed to thrips. It was my first time ever getting thrips and <laughs> we'll get to more on that whole situation later because a lot of the plants on this list succumb to that thrips issue. But I would say this was my fault because even though it was my first time having thrips, like I could have done better with those plants. Like it didn't really like occur to me that the reason that thrips weren't going away was because I had these two big bushy pothos right next to the plants that kept getting reinfected and I just wasn't treating them adequately. Big bushy plants like that there's lots of nooks and crannies for the little thrips to hide away in. So unfortunately, after a long battle, by the time I figured out what was going on, those two plants had actually really started to suffer from the thrips. I decided I just needed to trash them. It just wasn't worth it at that point. Like I can replace a golden pothos. I can replace a marble queen pothos easily, but you know, the plants that were getting reinfected from them, not as much. So I did unfortunately let them die kind of, but yeah, it was, it was a, it was a thrips casualty. And it was really sad because those were two of the plants I'd had the longest. And I think of that batch of plants that I got when I first got this apartment, the only one I still have is my Hoya Crimson Queen. So very sad, but I'm glad in the long run that I let them go. All right, number six <laughs> is actually yet another plant that uh, succumbed to the thrips issue. And that was my really cute little Philodendron Brazil. And it was so adorable. It was in my little llama planter. And that I know for sure I did put in like the June 2021 favorites video. Cause I was so proud of it. And like my friend had given me like one little cutting and I had grown it into this really cute, like bushy little plant. And it was in this little llama planter planter. And that was a fun Brazil too, because it didn't really do a very good job of sticking to the typical Brazil, like variegation pattern. It was throwing all sorts of fun colors and all sorts of fun patterns. And I was like really enjoying it. But yeah, the thrips got it. The thrips got it, man. Like there's just nothing that I could do. By the time I figured out what was going on with that plant, like same thing as with the two pothos, it was just too late. And it was, 
was just not worth it with that little plant. You know, I could get more cuttings for my friend and, and restart a Brazil. And eventually if I have space, I might do that, but I am also running out of space. So working really, really tirelessly to save, you know, a couple like common plants that I could easily replace, but that I don't even really have space for just like wasn't in the cards. So I did let that little philodendron Brazil go. Yeah, it doesn't make it any less sad because I really liked that. And it was like more of like a sentimental thing because my, my good friend did give me those cuttings, but you live and you learn. All right, so number five was my Anthurium Bellatus. So this was the first Anthurium that I ordered from an import. It arrived and it was just like a mess. <laughs> it looked horrible. And I successfully rehabbed it and brought it back to life. For a while, it did really well and it had a couple of leaves and I was like, okay, I'm ready. Like it's gonna start to mature. And then it got thrifts. <laughs> I should have called this video, or maybe I will still call it this video, like all the plants that have died of thrips and then like two that didn't. But um, yeah, the Anthurium bellatus got thrips and I just like the foliage got so messed up and I treated it and I treated it and it was still just kind of like, you know, hanging in there, like looking horrible. And I thought after it was, you know, rid of the thrips, which I did eradicate them from my collection, which, oh, thank God, because that was like horrible. That like actually like completely ruined planting in 2021 for me because it literally took like eight months to get rid of them but that's a whole other thing whole other issue for another video but the anthurium bellatus I thought if I put it in the greenhouse after I got rid of the thrips it would bounce back but it just didn't it's still in there and it's a stump and it's in pond and I'm like really afraid to take it out of there because I know it's done I know it's rotted I know there's no bringing it back um so it's really disappointing because I did really like that plant and those like haven't really caught on and so they are still kind of rare like I haven't seen them in stock at um, Aquagenera in a long time so it's definitely not a plant that I could just replace even though I'm not really like buying a ton of plants right now just I don't have any space like I would have liked it if that one had made it <laughs> but yeah the Anthurium bellatus like it didn't survive the thrips apocalypse and um I'm sad about it Okay, so number four, and this actually was one of the ones that wasn't part of the thrips issue, was my Hoya Callistophylla. This was like extra tragic because I bought this plant and it wasn't cheap. I bought this plant at like the end of 2020 when plants were still pretty expensive. I think I paid like a hundred bucks for it and I thought it was a like fully rooted plant. I got the plant and it actually, oh my, I was so mad. It was actually like a butt cut that had been cut in like six different places. It was completely unrooted and it had like black damage all over it. I think it might've been cold damage. And I was just like mortified that I had paid a hundred dollars for this. I was pretty convinced that this plant was not gonna make it. And if it had died then and there, that really wouldn't have been my fault. But <laughs> I was actually able to root it. I put it in LECA and it started to root and it even started to grow a little bit. And it was like a couple months long process. And I was so proud of myself. And then one day I came in and looked at it and it was just like the leaves were yellowing and the new growth had died. And I was like, what on earth? And so I moved it to the grow tent and it just, yeah, it just perished. Like there was nothing that could be done for it at that point. And I don't know exactly what happened, but I think what happened was that I may have either let the LECA dry out completely and then put too much water back into it, or I had just had too much water in it and the, and the roots like died. So that was my fault because I think that was the first plant I ever messed around in LECA with. But yeah, and I always see, uh, I have a I have a friend who has a really nice Hoya Callistophylla and she's always showing me pictures of it and I'm so jealous because I really wish I hadn't killed mine. Yeah, that was really, really sad. And that's actually one of the reasons why I don't really like LECA that much because I've had that problem with a couple other plants where just because San Diego has like a lot of fluctuation in humidity, like if you have plants that suck up their LECA water reservoir and you don't catch it and you let them sit too long and then you refill it like they'll they'll rot so yeah that was a tough one but it is what it is and hopefully i'll be able to replace it at some point all right no, number three is a hoya hoish <laughs> 
So, okay, these are like notorious for, for rotting and that's because they have really high variegation. They're really beautiful. And I actually got this one. It was a, it was a surprise extra that a friend of mine sent me in a box of plants that I bought from her. And I was so excited and I like put it in to pond and I put it in the grow tent. And like, I'm starting to learn though that really small plants, the grow tent's not the best place to like try and propagate them just because when you open it, like the fluctuations and the temperature and the humidity is just too much for them. So that's a lesson learned, but I still killed that Hoish Kaliana and I'm still like really sad about it. But my other friend sent me another one. So I have another chance and this has been in there for a really long time and it's doing okay. It looks okay. And I don't know if you can see, but yeah, it is rooting. There's one little root right there. So we're just gonna leave it in here indefinitely until we figure out what we're gonna do with it. But yeah, I was really disappointed that I killed my Hoish Kaliana, but this is like what plant friends are for because now I get a second chance and I'm really motivated to not kill this one because I think if I kill it twice, I don't deserve another one. All right, so coming in at number two was my Calathea Warswixii. Now, <laughs> this was like really stupid because I just let this plant die. Like I know how to take care of Calathea and I really wanted that Warswixii, but like this really just came down to not really having a place to put it. And so I put it up on a shelf where I know that when I put plants up on that shelf, I forget about them and don't water them. And that's okay with some plants that are much more drought tolerant, but Calathea, like they do not like to dry out. And I didn't put it into self watering and it just like, <sighs> withered away and it was just my fault completely. I just let it die. But like in my defense, this all kind of happened like right around the time that my previous dog passed away and it was really sudden and I was just like not really in a state of mind to care. And fortunately it was a Home Depot purchase. So it wasn't a ton of money lost and I can probably get a new one. It's getting to be that time of year when like the good shit starts to pop up at Home Depot. My friend told me she found silver swords there the other day. Okay. like related. But my point is like, I can probably get another Calathea Warswixii like this year if I want to. I'm trying to like scale back the amount of plants that I have everywhere. So I will probably wait on that until I have more space. But the fastest way to kill a Calathea is to not water it. And I just like, I just dropped the ball on that one. Okay, so the number one plant that I am absolutely devastated that I killed last year was a variegated watermelon peperomia. Now, this was like the plant that I never knew I needed. I didn't even get it intentionally. Like it was given to me as an extra in an order that I placed that like just there were a lot of delays and like literally everything went wrong and the seller got locked out of their Etsy. And so they very, very kindly gifted me this beautiful little variegated watermelon peperomia. And it was one of the most beautiful that I'd ever seen. It was like the whole leaves were, were like white and speckled and sparkly. And it was just like mind blowingly beautiful. And I was so excited to have it. It blew my mind when I opened the box. I couldn't believe it. And I didn't even know what it was. It seemed to be doing like okay for a while and then like all the new growth was like shriveling up and dying and then it started turning yellow and i was just like what on earth is going on with this and i'll tell you i bet you know what i'm gonna say but i'll tell you anyway it was thrips it was thrips the thrips patient Zero was the plant that I ordered from that seller. And then the poor little watermelon peperomia got it probably in transit. But like, I was so devastated that these plants, one of them was like a wishlist plant that was expensive. And then that was like amazing that he gave that to me. But it turns out they were just a freaking Trojan horse for thrips and it completely fucked up 2021 for me. So that sucked. Um, yeah, it was really brutal to lose that peperomia because even though watermelon peperomia variegated are not like a super rare plant, something that looked like that one, like that quality is not gonna be something that I'd be able to replace easily. Cause you see a lot of variegated watermelon peperomia floating around that like 
don't look anything like that. So it was really sad and disappointing. I'm devastated. Like I'm still sad about it because I just think about if I had actually, A, it hadn't had thrips and B, I had known what I was doing, like how beautiful that plant could have been by now. But hey, it is what it is. You know, you live and you learn. And that <laughs> watermelon pepperoni, pepperonia? That watermelon pepperomia died so that this pepperomia maculosa could thrive and ooh, she looking pretty. So, you know, all's well that ends well. I don't know how well it ended, but I do know how to get rid of thrips now. So I guess that's the silver lining. So leave a comment down below if you want me to give like a more elaborate explanation about how I got rid of the thrips. Leave a comment down below if you have a plant that you killed that you're devastated about. We can all commiserate together. I hope everyone is having a wonderful start to the growing season and I will see you in my next one.